Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. I am Ashish and this video will discuss you about the venous drainage of the lower limb. The venous drainage of lower limb is important because the venous blood is drained against gravity. This is a very important point because the gravity provides hindrance to the free flow of the blood towards the heart. As the blood has finally reached from the toe towards the heart, the gravity provides hindrance to its free flow. Now let's see what all the factors actually help in the venous drainage of the lower limb. So there are many factors but the majority five that I have selected are the first and the most important. So this is the most important factors that help in the venous drainage of the lower limb. That is the contraction of the calf muscles. Calf muscles are the bulky muscles of the posterior part of the leg. These muscles when they contract they pump the blood or more precisely you can say the venous blood towards the heart. So contraction of the calf muscles helps in the venous drainage of the lower limb. Second one is the transmitted pulsation from adjacent arteries. As you all know most of the veins run along with the arteries or are accompanied with the arteries. Suppose here is an artery and next to it a vein is present. So I will show this vein with a blue sketch. Now when this artery will contract and relax as the artery is a muscular structure it can contract and relax and so pulsation so it will press the adjacent veins and cause the flow of blood so the transmitted pulsation from the adjacent arteries also helps in the venous drainage of the blood now second one is the presence of valves the number of valves are present in the veins of the lower limb so these valves helps only in the unidirectional flow of blood so the blood always pumped above the fourth point is the negative interthoracic pressure negative interthoracic pressure acts at the vacuum and helps in the easily pulling of blood from the distance lower region now the fifth point the fifth point is the in recumbent position what recumbent means supine so in supine or lying down position which the tago which the tago means the source which are generating power for the venous return to the heart so it acts as a venous source of the venous return or the motor of the venous return to the blood which are produced by the contraction of the heart so the contraction of the heart act as a pump which helps in the easy drainage of blood from the lower limb now let's see the classification of the veins the veins of the lower limb are broadly classified into three types what are they one is the superficial veins second one is the deep veins and third one is the perforators so how are they actually defined or how they are classified they are classified on the basis of both the functionality as well as the anatomical location you can imagine the superficial veins as the common household pipelines that are lying on the surface of the ground and the deep veins as the deep underground pipes and the perforating veins are just the communication between the superficial and the deep veins okay so these superficial veins anatomically they lie in the superficial fascia and deep veins lie in close relation to the muscles and that actually helps in the pumping of the venous blood and the perforators act as a communication between the superficial and the deep veins now we have some more examples to add to the classification of the veins in the superficial veins we have two probably two there are number of small branches as well but the main two are the great and the small saphenous vein in the deep veins we have the anterior and the posterior tibial peroneal popliteal and the femoral the veins mentioned here are from down towards up so from the in the toe you will find near the lower region you will find the anterior and the posterior tibial and the above part you will find the femoral vein what about the perforators or the perforating vein perforating veins are also called perforators so you can use their name interchangeably okay and they have walls present which permit only one way flow of blood walls in the perforators allow the blood to travel from superficial to deep and not from deep to superficial so this is very important the walls present permit only one way flow of blood now we will draw the diagram of the venous range of the lower limb the video I had already uploaded in a separate section but as we are discussing the venous range we will draw it again so the way is very small trick to draw the venous range of the lower limb so simply you have to draw H so this is H this is small h and this is capital H now let's see how we will draw with the help of this as you all know suppose this is the inguinal ligament let's show this with a different color so suppose this is the inguinal ligament inguinal ligament okay inguinal L stands for inguinal ligament as you all know external iliac vein when it proceeds down it forms the femoral vein okay so this basic you should know 
दिस इज द एक्सटर्नल इलियक विंग एंड वेन इट प्रोसीड्स और मूव जस्ट बिलो द इंगल लिगामेंट इट फॉर्म्स द फ्यूमरल विंग नाउ लेट सी हाउ यू हैव टू ड्रॉ यू हैव टू सिंपली ड्रॉ एच अगेन एंड अगेन सो जस्ट ड्रॉ स्ट्रेट लाइन and make a h so this is the this was the first h that we made now draw second h taking the same line as the base so this was the first base that we draw taking it as the base we will draw one more h so here we will drawing one more h so this is the second h now we have to make three more h but in the opposite direction normally we draw h like this but we have to draw in the opposite manner okay like this now let's start so this was the first opposite h that we have to make here is the second and here is the third now note the level the third opposite h will meet at a higher level as compared to the second small the direct h okay so it will meet at a higher level now the first and the last line you have to extend downward and make a capital h okay now this is the basic framework for the venous range of the lower limb you can compare this diagram with the other diagram that are given in your books you will find it this is the most simple and the easiest way to draw the schematic diagram to represent the venous range of the lower limb so if you like in the video please hit the like button and do subscribe to your channel now we will draw the perforators there are number of perforators present but the majority one we will drawing here so here is the first perforator perforators i am showing the purple color but the blood the carrier is the venous blood only so this was the first perforator here we have the second perforator the exact position i'll be telling you in the later part when we'll discussing about the superficial vein deep veins and the perforating veins in detail so this is the first perforator this was the here we have the second here we have one more perforator and um, continuously we have three perforators over here one two and the three now i will label them and you can easily see the venous drainage of the lower limb in a simplified way with the help of this schematic diagram so in order to save time i have already labeled the diagram so this was the external iliac vein which after the inguinal ligament was called the femoral vein now we have made one bigger edge so the first edge that the line was here was the great saphenous vein the edge when it proceeds downward the base line when pushed downwards it forms a popliteal vein in the popliteal region then again it divides the popliteal vein divides into two so we have drawn the second edge over like this so the second edge and this base line are the anterior tibial and this edge mark the second line was the posterior tibial so the femoral vein the first edge was great saphenous then the line extend downwards from the popliteal vein it divides into two anterior tibial and the posterior tibial now the peroneal vein arises from the posterior tibial the opposite edge that we made and this is the posterior arch vein which arises from the or makes a tributary of the great saphenous vein now the third opposite edge this is the short saphenous vein short saphenous vein is formed by the joining of the lateral marginal vein and the dorsal venous arch so this was the edge the intercommunication between the two horizontal lines this was the dorsal venous arch and the dorsal venous arch when they combines with the lateral marginal vein it forms the short saphenous vein and then dorsal venous arch joins the medial marginal vein it forms the great saphenous vein so this was the overview of the venous range of the lower limb so the in the upcoming videos we will discussing about the superficial vein that are the great and the small saphenous and we will proceed accordingly if you like the video please hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel thanks for watching